Boy, God's really been blessing us around here. We just gonna let it keep on blessing. Amen. How many know it's best to let God be God? Amen. They don't know it yet, but they've been sitting here for a reason. Amen. Amen. They've been sitting here for a reason. Amen. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Now, I'm going to try and preach, but understand the big preacher doesn't make his presence known. Amen. You know, I like it when the big preacher stops by. He lets us know that he's still in charge. Amen. There's a lot of times we pray for things and we pray for things. And services like this is where you receive the things that you've been praying for. Amen. So understand tonight. Understand the, men, uh, the mentality that you have to carry. Tonight's the night that I'm going to receive what I've been praying for. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Ephesians 5, verse number 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God. As dear children. Amen. Amen. Now, whenever it says there, as dear, dear children, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 14 through 16 says, As obedient children, not fastening yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you, listen here, is holy, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy. For I am holy. Now what does holy mean? What can you say holy means? I need to be dedicated to the Lord. Oh, you see, a lot of time people don't like to hear that part holy. Oh, why? Because holy means that I'm dedicated to the Lord. Amen. But now what is the same lesson here? What the Bible said the elders in heaven. Yeah. 
submission to our God. Amen. I want to show myself worthy of what he's blessed me with. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Now walk in love. Uh, oh yeah, because he loved me, my Savior God. He didn't care about my sin. He forgot about my sin the day that I repented. He said, I'll throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. I'll forget about it. Don't worry about it no more. He loves me. What did he say? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. For they know not what they do. Huh? You have to love somebody to forgive them. Verse number three. But fornication and uncleanness and covetousness, uh, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking or jesting, uh, which are not convenient, uh, but rather giving of thanks. Now what does it mean when he said they're not convenient? Uh, that means that they're not proper. Can you say, I've got to live my life in a proper manner to serve the Lord. You see, people get around, they do all this fighting, screaming, cussing going on. They don't carry themselves in a proper manner. Hey, man, listen here. This message is about to get real here in just a second. This right here is just a warm-up, and it ain't even going to cost you no extra. Do you believe that? I ain't even going to put that in the bill this week. What I'm telling you about is this man named Jesus who loves you so much, who said that I'll forgive you, but you got to show yourself worthy to receive my blessing. You've got to carry yourself in a proper manner. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man uh, who is an idolater hath an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. What does it mean when he said vain words? Empty words. They mean nothing. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Oh yeah. Be not ye partakers with them. Can you say, I used to have an excuse? Yeah, each and every one of us used to have an excuse. You see, whenever we was living out in the world and sin, before we met the Lord, we had an excuse. We had never been taught, we had never learned about this man named Jesus. Amen? We have an excuse to live the way that we was like. But I'm sorry if you've been in church and you've listened to the word preached out of this pulpit. I can't say about any other church, but I guarantee you when you come through those doors right there, you'll hear nothing but the truth and only the truth. So help me God. But I'm here to tell you right now that when you've heard it and then you walk back out those doors and you go to live the life that you was living up before you came through those doors, can you say my excuse is gone? excuses be living the way that you're living. Amen. Oh, preacher, I might not get no one amen after this early. You, you keep on recording, brothers, for somebody tonight. I'm trying to tell you right now, church, you got to understand, and you got to listen, that we ain't got no excuses. Now, let me ask you this. If Jesus was carrying your cross up Calvary's tree, how many excuses do you think that he could have thought of when it come to legions of angels to come take him off of that cross? But the Bible lets us know we got thousands of find one excuse but he found none what's yours see I told you I wasn't going to get no amen when I said that one. oh yeah that's one of them amen and me questions sometimes I think whenever I'm trying to do my best sometimes I've got lazy and now I need to stop and think what's my excuse oh my ankles hurt really I ain't been beat with a whip today. No. Uh, sure I ain't been stabbed in the side. Sure to God, I can get up and do something for the Lord. Hey. What's your excuse, hey. amen? Oh, yeah, we used to have an excuse, but now that we've been taught about Jesus, we have no excuse. We have no excuse. Verse number nine. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving that, is, is proving that it is acceptable unto the Lord. What is it? It says proving that it is acceptable unto the Lord. Now we've got to prove this because of temptation. We must also, we must always approve, listen here, or discern what is and isn't acceptable to God. Can I get an amen? You and your wife should ask yourself, does God approve of this or does God look down upon this? You see, now there's a lot of times we just forget about that little inner voice. How many of you have ever met that inner voice inside of your mind? Now there's been times before that that little voice inside of my head
Bible said that Jesus said, I'll leave you behind a comforter. Who is that comforter? The Holy Spirit. The Bible lets us know whenever we give our life to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes in and he dwells inside of us. Can I get an amen? So whenever you think about these things and you go to do these things, and that little voice is saying, no, that's the Holy Ghost. He's coming to your remembrance and he's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. God does not approve of this. Amen. Yesterday morning we were sitting there at the, uh, the restaurant. We were sitting down eating us a bite to eat. Yeah. And as we were sitting there, a, a lady come through the door and she had two children. This lady, we know that her sister had passed away. She took her children from her. Uh, after she died, she took on her children and is raising them the best she is, can. Single mother raising the, her sister's, her dead sister's children, trying to do the best that she can do. And as she walked through the door, something popped in the back of my mind. Yeah. I remember many a times when me and my mama used to walk into restaurants. Yeah. And she was a single mother who fought and worked every single day. Yeah. And I remember whenever days were good and we had a little bit of money. And I remember when days were bad and we used to walk in with a sheet full of coupons in our hand and buying yeah, up the dollar menu just to make it by. Well, I seen that lady walk in and she had a big old thing of coupons in her hand and they were yeah. flipping through seeing what they could buy. <laughs> and it hit my mind and said, you've been there. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, it hit my mind and he said, you've been there. Yeah, come on, man. And I said, well, God, you blessed me with a good job. You blessed me with enough for me to get by. I might not have much, but you blessed me enough to make it to another day. So that little voice inside of my head that reminded me, you've been there. You see, sometimes when we're there, we thank God that we're just barely able to make it. But one day when the light shines and all of a sudden God's looked down and he's blessed you, you can be the one to stand up from the back of the restaurant, walk up to the front. Say order what you want to. You're able to pull out your card and you're able to swipe it and take care of that worry of maybe that they had for the day. It might have only sustained them, they had the day, but it done the job. Because now whenever they look back, when they get older, they can say, I've been there. But God blessed me and now I'm going to help somebody else. Now it ain't much and I don't want no glory for it. But I remember times that I've been there. You see, when you love somebody like Jesus loves, you can think of situations in life and know sometimes we've been there. There's not every day we can walk out and go to any restaurant and just buy what we want. There ain't all the time you can go in any clothing store and pick the shoes and the shirt and the pants that you want and just swipe the card and go on. There's been days you had to scrounge up pennies just to go yeah, get enough to yeah. eat. But I serve a God. I serve a God, and I can tell you that it's true. Whenever I keep my faith in Him, yeah. I've never went without food. Amen. I've never went without drink. I've never went without a roof over my head or able to get to and from. And I thank God that I've been there. So we've got to understand what is and is not acceptable of God. That was the time that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, get up there and pay for their food. I don't care what it costs. So I had to obey him. There's times God's told you to do the same. And sadly enough, church, there's times that we've all sat back there and not moved, not one inch. It might have been three, four, five, six dollars, but it really meant so much more. And it blessed me more than it did them because I know I've been there. Prove me what is acceptable unto the Lord. Verse number 11. And have no fellowship, are you listening to me, with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Oh, I'm going to like this tonight. What does reprove mean? Reprove means expose. Can you say God will expose you? Oh, yes, he will. Luke chapter 12, verse number 2 and 3 said, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, right. neither hid that shall not be known. Yeah. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, yeah. and that which ye have spoken in the ear of the closet shall be proclaimed upon yeah. the housetops. Yeah. Verse number third, 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah. But all Things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth making manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise the dead, and Christ shall give 
the light. God, listen here, will set me free by the light. When he said, awake, thou that sleepest. Who is that? That's us. Arise from the dead. That's when we give our life back to the Lord. And that old man passes away and we finally wake up. And it said, Christ shall give thee light. What does that mean? We are the light of the world. He'll let my light shine once more. I want to sing this song for you tonight. When I 